Let's look at an example of iteration using a while statement. The Fibonacci sequence is a sequence of numbers that was not invented by Fibonacci, but he made them popular, so we still call them the Fibonacci sequence. The way to construct this sequence is to start with 0, then 1, then each subsequent element of the sequence is the sum of the previous two elements. 0 plus 1 is 1, 1 plus 1 is 2, 1 plus 2 is 3, 2 plus 3 is 5, etc. So here's a mathematical shape called the Fibonacci spiral that you can construct by writing down squares of the sizes of the Fibonacci numbers. 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21 are the side lengths of these squares. And then if you connect the corners of the squares, you get this beautiful spiral, which people like to look for in nature. Here it is in a cabbage. Okay, how would we compute Fibonacci numbers? Well, we'll write a function that computes the nth Fibonacci number, where we're going to number them starting with zero. So zero is the zeroth Fibonacci number, one is the first. What's the fourth Fibonacci number? It's three, the sixth is eight, and the eighth is 21. So if you pass in eight, you should get the eighth Fibonacci number is 21. The way we'll compute them using a while statement is to notice that I can compute this one just by writing down the number zero, and then I'll just add the difference between this and this, then the difference between this and this, the difference between this and this, and if I add all those differences together, then I'll arrive at a Fibonacci number. And here are those differences. The difference here is one, so that's how you get from zero to one. And then to get from one to one, the difference is zero. To get from one to two, the difference is one. From two to three, the difference is one. Three to five, the difference is two, etc. And the interesting thing about the Fibonacci sequence is that aside from the one at the beginning, the differences are the Fibonacci sequence again. So here's one way to compute the Fibonacci sequence. You start out by saying, which Fibonacci number have I computed already? k will increase according to this sequence, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. The kth Fibonacci number is one of these, 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8. And the difference between the kth Fibonacci number and the next Fibonacci number, k plus 1, if you will, is another number that we're going to track, which will start out at 1, and then it will be 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, etc. And the difference happens to be the last Fibonacci number. So if I want to know the difference between 5 and 8, well, the difference is 3. Then we'll march up the sequence. While k is less than n, where n is the index of the number that I'm looking for, I'll rebind kth and difference to be the kth number that I had before plus the difference that gets me to the next Fibonacci number. And the difference is the kth Fibonacci number. Here, this stores the recurrence that I told you about. The difference is always the last, the previous Fibonacci number. And so the next one is the sum of the current one and the previous one. Then we increase k in order to keep track of where we are. And this is an implementation that will return each of these Fibonacci numbers given each of these indices. Now I like this example because Here's an assignment statement with two different names and two different expressions. But it gives a different result than if I had listed these out in either order. So saying difference equals kth and then kth equals kth plus difference does not do the same thing as writing down one assignment statement. Because in this one assignment statement, we compute both the values on the right and then bind them. In this version, we would change difference first and then we would add difference in. So in particular, at the very beginning, the difference was one, we would change it to zero, then we'd say kth equals kth plus zero, and kth would stay the same, and everything would be zero forever. It's also different from this version, where we try to update the Fibonacci number first, and then we try to update the difference here. We're saying kth plus difference is some sum where we've advanced the Fibonacci number. So instead of difference keeping track of the previous Fibonacci number, it 
keeps track of the current Fibonacci number, which means these are always the same. So what you get with this version is just numbers doubled over and over again. One, two, four, eight, etc. A useful exercise to think about for a moment is how would you achieve this result using this kind of implementation if you weren't allowed to assign two names to two values at once? What would you do? You could pause the video for a moment and think about it. I'll tell you in three, two, one. If you want to compute the result and you're not allowed to multiple assign, to assign two names at once, then you'd have to introduce another name to keep track of some value temporarily. One possible solution is to introduce a name old diff which keeps track of what the difference used to be. In this version, we keep track of that previous number, that old difference that we need to compute the next Fibonacci number by assigning difference to it. Then we can go ahead and change difference to something new, and we still have all the information we need to compute the next Fibonacci number, which is the current Fibonacci number, plus the difference that we had already computed right before we forgot about it. So here's a version that works just as well as our one-liner, but takes three lines and an additional name. So that's one reason why multiple assignment can be particularly convenient.